Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Malte Martin and today I want to introduce you to a new series. I want to do little hand pen tutorials where I teach one pattern each time so that you can step by step, the time goes by, stock up your pattern library. If you like this video and if you like this kind of content, make sure to follow my channel. And of course, you can go further in le learning with me, with my masterclass or my studio. Both links are in the description. So for today's video, I chose a meditative pattern, which is very, very easy to play and you can really let yourself go into it. This is how it sounds and as I said before it's very easy to play. We play only hand to hand and in total we only use five notes of the instrument. For our understanding this is called the ding, the central note and then in the circle I start at the lowest note with the biggest diameter and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is how the pattern sounds and now I want to go step by step through the pattern, tell you how, how it works and then by the end of the video I also, also give you some tips on how to expand the pattern and how to make it your own. It's a hand to hand pattern so that means that our hands are always alternating. My right hand starts on the ding and it changes permanently between the ding and tone field number five. So this is what the right hand does. The left hand alternates between tone field number one and tone field number six. If I have this, I can start playing both together and as I said before, I play hand to hand. That means that I play right, left, right, left, right, left. So you can start with me on the first chord. If I have this, I can increase the speed and play it a bit quicker. And I want to play and to experiment with the dynamics. Sometimes I go louder, then I go a bit more quiet. This is how I bring a pattern to life basically. So if, I, if I'm able to play this with the dynamics and in a speed that I, that I feel comfortable with, then I can change tone field number one to tone field number two. That means that my left hand doesn't alternate between one and six anymore, but between two and six. My right hand stays the same going from the ding to tone field number five. This sounds and looks like this. If we 
play both um, variations of that. I'm always doing like I'm, I'm counting in cycles. So this is one cycle for me. And I play this cycle eight times before I change the lower note to the two. So I play and I count and you can just play with one. here what can we do I always like literally always say that we can always <laughs> change the highest note so the highest note in this pattern was the six so what I can do is to play around with the melody which is on the highest level like on the changing the six to the seven or changing the six to the eight or to the nine or to the four, whatever I want to do, I can experiment with this. So what I can do is to like on each time that I would play the six, I can change it for something else, for example. last hit of each chord like in the eighth cycle or I change every second one like the first and the third and the fifth and seventh is that I always repeat what I did on the first chord I repeated it on the second chord as well which helps me the first listener and also if there's audience second listener to um, yeah to 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 really relax because we can we already can guess what comes next and this helps a lot um, yeah, this helps the mind a lot to relax and the body to relax and this is what this pattern is also made for. So with this you can experiment, mind the dynam dynamics, play louder, play quieter, then um, change the, the melody notes and of course combine it with patterns you already play and find your transitions. So that's the input for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, and yeah, next week there will be another handpan snack. And 
yeah sending much love to all of you thanks for watching bye bye hey guys thanks for tuning in i'm malte martin and welcome to another handpan tutorial i will show you another quick and beautiful pattern so here is what we are gonna learn today pen but you can use whichever hand pen you have and just try to adapt what I'm playing to your scale if you don't have a decode available. This pattern is called 332 pattern because I always play one two three one two three one two three three two which totals an eight and then we are again in the 4 4 time signature and we can combine this pattern with most of the other pa patterns probably that we have played before. Before we start to, um, to see how we're gonna play it, I want to introduce the four chords that we use. The four chords are 4, 6 and 8. So find these notes and get comfortable with their position, 4, 6 and 8, then find 3, 5 and 7 and get comfortable with their position. Then the third chord is 1, 3, 5 and the last chord is 2, 4 and 6. So what I what helps me to, to remember the chord structure is that I um, for me it's like a circle. I start here in the left up, upper chord then I go to the right right the lower chord and to the left the lower chord and for me it kind of is a circle that I'm playing. We can start this pattern on the highest note, we can start this pattern on the lowest note, we can even start it on the um, note in the middle but I want to show you the pattern how it um, sounds and how it is played if we start on the lowest note. What helps me a lot is to define which hand plays which notes. So my non-dominant hand is going to play the lowest note, always the lowest note of the chords. And my highest, uh, my dominant hand plays the two higher notes. So play with me. We only play the first chord. Four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six. Again, a bit slower. Four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six, four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six. Four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six. So that is the movement. to pause the video to really get comfortable with the first chord to play it and to to you know you to be able to play it fluently without so much effort in the mind and then when you when you're able to do that you can just come back to the video and continue so that is the first chord the same the very same we do on the on the next chord on the second chord which is three five and seven and there Remember, I take my non-dominant hand on the lower note and my dominant hand on the higher notes, same like before. And then I play three, five, seven, three, five, seven, three, five. Together, a bit slower.
So same thing here. You pause the video, you get comfortable with the second chord and then you play the first chord and the second chord in a loop together. And as soon as you are able to do that with ease and with relaxation and joy, you move on with the video and we explore the third chord, which is one, three and five. I take my non-dominant hand on the lower note and my dominant hand on the higher notes. So and now we are at the last chord, which is two, four, and six. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two, four. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two, four. So now we can play them all together in one full loop. I always play each chord twice. So twice, four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six, four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six, until I move to the next chord. Maybe you want to listen first, get into the mood and then start in the next loop when I finish with all chords. For the first two rounds I will count and then I will play without counting and you can just enjoy playing with me. Four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six, four, six, eight, four, six, eight, four, six, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, three. So this is one of my all-time favorite patterns. I play it almost in every improvisation. I always come back to this because for me it's a very beautiful way to play a chord. What I can do with this is to change the highest note as always. So in the chord 4, 6 and 8 I can um, change the 8 to the 7 or to the 9 for example which could sound like this. the highest note always and whatever I 
do, I try to be as repetitive as possible. So I want to create a new challenge for me in adding new high notes and then to play exactly the same um, on every chord, for example, or only on the one chord and then the other chords I play in the old way. Whatever I want, whatever I do, I want to, to be aware, to be fully present in what I do. And yeah, like this, I'm, I'm kind of controlling what I play. And it's not about like, you know, holding on and yeah, I want to control. It's more like, um, yeah, just being aware. And, and um, because if we can control what we play, we, we, we need to know what we play. And if we know what we play, we can expand, we can um, change stuff consciously. And this helps us to, yeah, to just enrich our playing. So let me know in the comments how you liked this tutorial. I will definitely give more input on the 3-3-2 pattern at some point because there's so much to do with this pattern. But um, for now, that's it. Join my masterclass or the membership-based studio. I would so much love to see you there and have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Malte Martin and welcome to another handpan tutorial. I started this uh, series a few weeks ago because I just um, love yeah, to teach handpan and to show people how I approach this instrument. Today's pattern is called the trans groove, which is also um, featured in my masterclass on Master the Handpan. I want to just shout out Hang Massive because in the retreats I always call it the Hang Massive move and it sounds like this. to use the same chord structure as last time so that you can connect the 3-3-2 pattern with the hang massive or trans groove. This is how it works. We have our chord progression, it's 4-6, 3 and 5, 1 and 3, and 2 and 4. This is how it works. We always play hand to hand, which means that the hands are permanently alternating and on each right strike, there is a left strike following. First, I want to introduce the chord progression again. It's four and six, three and five, one and three, So I want to get comfortable with the chord structure. Before I start playing this pattern, I really want to make sure that I know where my notes are to don't mess up my mind throughout the whole process because I want to have joy while exploring something new and not getting overhand. So step by step, first I get to know my chord progression and then I start when I'm ready with the video with the tutorial of the transcript. This is how we do it. The dominant hand goes from the ding to the higher node of the chord. So in the first chord, four, six, it goes from ding to six. And the non-dominant hand always does a strike in between on the lower node of the chord. In this case, the four. So I play ding, four, six, four, ding, four, six, four, ding, four, six, four, ding, four, six, four. This is what I want you to practice now. So 
that you feel comfortable with this movement and then we go to the next chord. On the next chord I go from the ding to the five with the dominant hand. And with the non-dominant hand I play the lower note of this chord which is the three. So I play from the ding to the three now and to the lower no the lower note is played by my non-dominant hand and it doesn't matter which finger I'm using I always use the finger that is most comfortable for me if I really, if I'm really picky for the sound, I can of course always play the notes only with my fingertips or only, only with my thumb or whatever. But uh, I personally, I just take it as it comes and um, yeah, I'm going for the most comfortable way. So we go to the last chord. We go from the ding to the four, which is four is the higher note of our chord. And in between I play the two. here we can combine the, the four chords and make it a full circle and I will start and you can join me whenever you want I'm always playing the um, one cycle one cycle is that I'm playing four cycles for each chord and then I'm changing to the next chord one every day for hours and you can go really really deep um, I just want to give you one or two things that you can do with this pattern there's a lot to, to do but I, I'm really going deep into that with pulley rhythms and everything uh, in my masterclass but here now um, what we can do I always say it we can change the higher note and make it another melody so what I would change like I, I what I would choose at first is the next note which comes next to my actual melody note that I was playing the melody note is the higher note of my chord that I was playing alternating with the ding so this is what I could do so instead of this note I was playing that note same, I can do the second chord instead of this note. I can play tone three number seven. Same on the third chord. And of course, on the fourth chord as well. If I combine those two melodies, like in one circle, I play the original melody note and on the next, full loop I play um, the new melody note or the new note that I was just implementing it sounds like this
And of course, I can combine them even in the same cycle. So I can do D4, 8, 4, D4, 6, 4, D4, 8, 4, D4, 6, 4. Same on the next chord. Ding, 3, 7, 3, Ding, 3, 5, 3, Ding, 3, 7, 3, Ding, 3, 5, 3. And like this I can go through all the chords. And if I want it a bit more percussive, I can just let go of the melody note and just playing with my non-dominant hand the bass note, always the lower note of the chord and slap the instrument instead of playing the melodious upper note of the chord. And then it sounds like this. everything that we learned in this video and inspire you to do something original, something that comes out of you afterwards. something some new input some some new inspiration and yeah let me know in the comments how you like this series and check out my masterclass check out my membership program i see you in one week for the next handpan snack tutorial here on this channel enjoy this day bye bye hey guys my name is miles martin and i hope you're doing well today I want to show you um, yeah, a new pattern today and this is how it sounds. much as possible so that every one of you can follow. I'm playing here on a D chord 10 made by Yatao Pen, um, but you can yeah, play any other instrument, whether it's a D chord 10 or another scale, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, obviously with the D chord 10 you can follow along with me and hearing the same notes, but if you have another scale, just try to adapt and I'm sure you will you will make it. So let's break it down. I uh, can split the pattern in two cycles. So this is the first cycle. And then there is the second cycle coming. For the first cycle we need three different chords. The first chord is 4 and 8. Find these two notes and then we go to 3 and 7 for the second chord. Find those two notes and then 
for the third chord, which we play twice as long as the others, uh, double the length, we play two and six. So four and eight, three and seven, Before we start with the pattern, make sure to position your right hand on the upper notes and your left hand on the lower notes. That makes it more easy for your mind to don't get confused if you know ah, my right hand is always on the upper note and my left hand is always on the lower note. So my right hand goes to the 8, my left hand goes to the 4. And now comes how do we play this polyrhythm. We play both hands together and then I play right, left, right again together, right, left, right, together, right. So it's together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right. That's all. And this is what we are going to practice now. Together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together. So from here, if you feel like you need to practice this a bit more, click pause, you know, take your time. This is really um, an intermediate pattern and it's normal to take some more time for that. So uh, please really uh, practice this and as soon as you feel like you're comfortable with that, you don't maybe don't have to count in the, in the head anymore, um, then we go to the next step, to the next chord. So now we have our left hand on the three and our right hand on the seven. And here we make exactly the same pattern. So we do together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together. Same thing here, click pause and then try to, to get it really into your body, to get it really into your, into your mind and everything, so that you are uh, effortlessly able to play it. And as soon as you can play the first chord and the second chord, you can do them after each other. This is how it sounds then. is the two and the six. My right hand goes on the higher note, my left hand goes on the lower note, so we do the same here. Together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, so you see, it's always the same. We just use other notes and the hands are a bit different, in a different position. But um, I'm sure, yeah, with enough practice, with enough time, with enough dedication and patience, you will be able to make it. And then the first cycle is already done. So now we play the first cycle together and you will see, I play one time the uh, polyrhythm 
here, then I play it here, and then two times here to make my cycle of four chords complete because I only have three different chords, but I always want to have four, like a progression of four chords. And I can, of course, double one chord to make three chords, totaling four. Let's play this first cycle together. Together, right, left, right, together. cycle and now to play the second one as we already mastered the first cycle to play the second cycle it's super easy we just take other notes it's um, built on the same chord structure but we play a slightly different melody so instead of the eight we play the six instead of the seven we play the five and then play instead of the six in the third chord we play the four this means that we don't leave one uh, note in between three as in the same uh, in, the, in the first cycle If you see everywhere there was one note in in between now we just move the right hand one um, One note lower to the side and already we have the right chords. So four six three five and two four And again two four and then we continue with the fully rhythm together right left right together right left right together right together right left right together right left right together right together right left right together right left right together right together right left right together right left right together right first the first chord then the second chord and the third chord and then you do it all uh, after each other take your time you're at home you know you you can just do one chord on the one day the second one on the, on the next another day then you combine them and at some point you will be able to play all three of them of the second cycle and then if you manage to play the first cycle and the second cycle you will put, put them all together and then you have this Just uh, yeah, congratulations to you. It's uh, not an easy pattern, and um, you did very well in mastering it. I will show you um, how it sounds when you play it a bit faster. this rhythm from 
many of my improvisations and compositions. I hope you enjoyed. Wishing you a great day and see you next week for the next tutorial. Mwah. Much love. Hello everyone, welcome back to another handpan tutorial. My name is Malte Martin and today I want to show you how to play this pattern. very simple rhythm for the beginning. My dominant hand goes on the ding and then we count like this. One and two and three and four and 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 it's a hand to hand pattern which means that I constantly play the right and the left hand after each other. Basically, I only have the accents on the one and here also on the one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and three. If I don't like the sound of the slap so much, I can also do a knock. this in that tempo we can move on if you feel like unclear and unsure when yeah when the impulse is coming just keep on doing it just skip back to the to the uh, beginning of the video and go with me through it and the more you do it the more you you play this rhythm the more you practice there will be a natural body understanding um, arising and yeah when you're at the point we can go to the next step and this is how it looks like. With my dominant hand I was playing the ding, then I was playing the shoulder and I, then I was playing the slap and then again back to the shoulder. With my non-dominant hand I was constantly playing the shoulder. So a perfect thing to, to be replaced because the shoulder is not really necessary um, for, for the groove. I could also play still feel the rhythm it only adds a bit of drive so what I can do is to move my hand from uh, the shoulder my non-dominant hand which is not playing the ding and the slap but only the shoulder uh, I move it from the shoulder to tone field number two and then I do exactly the same as I did before one and I 
because it's always more fun if I add another bass note or another chord. Um, I want to change from tone field number one, add number two, to tone field number one. And then um, the pattern sounds like that. we can um, replace the slap with a melody note of my choice. I will show you how it sounds. One and two and three and four and 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 two and three and four and and I will showcase you how this can sound and where you can go with this. for you and see you soon next Wednesday for the next hemp and snack. Mwah. Much love. Hello guys, my name is Malte Martin and welcome to another hand pen tutorial here on my YouTube channel. I am playing here Yatao Pen Decur 10, the amber version of it and this is what we're gonna learn today. very quickly now to show you what is possible but to um, yeah to master this pattern of course we we don't start at this tempo we start very very slowly so that every one of you can follow um, first of all I want to explain you the chords we are in because this helps you to go further um, with this pattern so the first chord we are playing is uh, two four and six 
the second chord is one, four, and six. So how do we play this pattern? My right hand alternates between the lowest and the highest note of the chord. That's the first chord. And now I change to the other chord. the four. So we are again in a hand-to-hand -hand pattern, which means that we are permanently alternating the right and the left hand. And after each strike with the right hand, there follows a left hand strike. of this pattern and now we want to, uh, to add a little melody on top. What I do is to change the highest note of, my, um, of this pattern. So instead of playing here the 6, I can of course also play the 7 or the 8 or the 5. All notes I can um, play instead of the 6. And like that, I create this melody on top. So uh, we go from 6 to 7 to 8 to 7. You will understand what I mean when you follow me on this pattern. Two times on the 6, two, time on, two times on the 7. Now I change the chord and go to the 8. show you a few examples and you can get inspired by that for your own melodies. already just add dynamics that means play slower play faster play louder play less loud 
to really make it alive. And then it can sound like that. So this just to give you some inspiration what you can do with this kind of pattern. You're definitely not, um, don't need to be stuck in this one melody. Uh, it's just a general hand movement that I showed you and you can see where it leads you. Um, the bass is always the same. No, my left hand always stayed on the four and my right hand always did this movement between the bass note of the chord and a melody note. The melody note was um, was not fixed, but the chord progression was fixed so that I was changing from one chord to the other. And that is really necessary to create this mood and to create this mystic inside of the pattern. So I hope this um, tutorial yeah, ignites something in you and you can understand your instrument better and you like to play this pattern and it gives something to you. And if so, then you should definitely check out my masterclass. I give so much input in there about like how to bring your playing alive, how to really uh, connect with your instrument, how to feel your playing, how to express yourself. And you shouldn't miss that if you are into handpan playing. You can also check out our shop for this amazing instrument I'm playing here, it's the Yatao. Decurt 10 Ember, link in the description. And yeah, wishing you a beautiful, beautiful day. Mwah. Thank you for joining and see you next week for the next tutorial. Mwah. Bye bye.